<gasps> it's so beautiful. Oh, you don't know how I love a rage alarm source such as this DeWalt DW125. Well, I've had three of these, yeah. And this is probably the oldest in the 20 years I've owned a rage alarm source. Oh, I get all, kind of, oh, I get all sticky I do every time I do that. I don't know why. But anyway, I made a video about a year ago I did, yeah. About the DeWalt rage alarm saw. Or any rage alarm saw come to that. Or a craftsman or whatever. And I said, you've got to keep your tool clean, you have, yeah. You've got to clean your tool. Or you could get an infection. But also, you could have a uh, um, lumpy ride. <gasps> well, you see. That wasn't the problem, they agreed, they did, yeah, in the comments, that I have to keep my tool clean. So I did, yeah. But when I got to the part of the video where I lubed my tool, <laughs> you know what I mean by lubing my tool? Well, they all got hot under the collar, they did, yeah. So there I was, lubing my tool, okay. And he said, don't do that. You never lubricate your rage alarm saw arm. No, they said. Well, I said, that's bollocks. That it is. You can't have it as dry as a nun's nasty. It'll be too much lip and friction. And you could go to line. Well, you see, I tend to lube my tool. And sod the fanatics, I don't care. Even though they told me. Well, if you look at the instructions, they say you shouldn't lube it. Well, I'll tell you what. The DeWalt instructions, the manual, <laughs> the sales pitch, they even suggested that you could grab the saw, flip it around that way so the blade is horizontal, and you could grab your piece of plywood and push it through. So I'll tell you what, anything that's in that flipping manual, well, they can go to hell, as far as I'm concerned, because it's bollocks, and it is. Well, all I do is I tend to <laughs> clean my track like so. But also, because you see, it all builds up there, you see, yeah. Now, partly because I do lube my tool. But you're supposed to maintain it, aren't you? I mean, if you know you're going to get a little bit of build at a gunge on there, well, you, it just makes sense you just clean it off occasionally. And that's all I do. I just, you know, if I get a build up on there, because you feel it in the saw as you use it, it feels a bit lumpy, you see. Yeah, it feels a bit like, uh, yeah, well, it's a bit like cellulite, I suppose, right, and that. Yeah, you can imagine it, can't you? It's going to be a bit of a lumpy ride. Don't it? Oh, you don't want that, no. So there I go, I clean the two tracks, because it's like two half round um, co like coves for which the ball racers you know uh you know bearings that sit in yeah there's three of them okay you can adjust them if it gets a bit sloppy <laughs> Ooh. anyway so you can um you can adjust them so they fit the track properly <laughs> but i also clean the rollers as well because what i'm doing at the moment i'm using alcohol wipe an ethanol wipe what i'm doing there now if it gets really bad what i do is i take this off the end, there's two Allen bolts in there. And I can pull the whole assembly out and then I can clean it really nicely, you see, then push it all back in again. You know, it works really well. But regular maintenance, you don't really need to do that. All you need to do is just make sure you can get in there and you can clean those rollers and make sure they're, you know, um, that they're clean. And at the moment, I'm holding the, the, the alcohol wipe up against the roller and pulling it back and forth so the roller is wiping across the actual alcohol wipe. But be careful. You don't want to trap your fingers. No, because it hurts. And I know that, you know, because I did it. Yeah, not a great idea. So just pull it back and forth like so. Just making sure you're getting those rollers. Okay? Now what you've got to do is, when you do this, say for instance the one on that side, because the way the roller turns, make sure you push the saw forwards and then pull the saw towards you. And that way, you won't pull your finger between the bearing and the actual track itself. Do you know what? That hurts when you do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mmm. Don't do that. No. Okay, so I'm quite comfortable. Oh, that wall is a bit more in that one. You get a build up of this nut, like wood as well. So what happens, you see, with the wood? It's not just because I've um, used oil to actually lubricate the track. Now, you know, like wood pellets and stuff, when they get squished, the sawdust, and they end up in those little um, pellets. It's the ligament in the wood, you see, that sticks and bonds all the bits and pieces together. Now, with those rollers constantly squeezing the sawdust on the, into the track, you'll get, it'll, like, it'll just like, stick together. So you need to clean that out as well, not just because you've oiled it and it's sticking to the oil. And the amount of oil I put on is minuscule. I mean, it's really minuscule. It's just a smearing, that's all it is. We're not trying to make it ridiculously wet with oil, no. And don't use grease. Whatever you do, don't use grease. Grease is a bad idea. You know, I've seen people do that before. And that is a mess, an absolute mess. So, yeah, I just, yeah, get rid of all that nastiness in there. Any more, any more, mm, is there more in there? No, that's okay. That's okay. It's really easy just with a 
alcohol wipe. Don't use baby wipes because they've got water in them. You don't want water in your tool, no. Now you can use the same wipe if you like, or get a clean one, and grab a bit of three in one type oil, a thin oil. Do you want anything thick? No, I know you want engine oil or anything like that, because stuff will stick to it like crazy. And I'll just soak that on there like that, and then I coat it. Now you could use WD-40 if you're worried about the tracks rusting or anything like that, you're not using it very often, um, or the bearings, what have you. Well, then you could use a bit of three in one oil on that protector. It has got a little bit of lubricating properties to it, but not a lot. No, once all the uh, solvent is evaporated, there's very little, little lubricating um, ability in WD-40, no matter what they tell you. Put it like this, you might as well splash a load of white spirit over it, have the same effect. You know, they're all fossil fuel based stuff. So that's in there like that. So there you go, like that. It's not lumpy now either. You see what happens is you see as that stuff builds up in the on the tracks, you'll feel it. And you can back some forwards, you'll feel that lumpy. It's like the rollers having to roll over something else, which shouldn't be there. But it's not now, you see? Yeah. And the run back, which is on the back there, is pulling it back lovely. So, to all you radio uh, arm saw fanatics out there, lube your flipping tool, then maintain it. Mm? It's a good idea, you know. Hey, all you have to boot the old like button and maybe that subscribe and the bell icon, because then you will get a warm, fuzzy feeling in your pocket. Oh, it's exciting. Oh, it is. Every time I upload another video. I wasn't mad enough for you. Or should I go madder? <laughs> I do love a bit of mad, you know. Oh.